Hiya, and welcome to Into the Pits, an amazing roguelike magic shooter <laughs> of all things. Today, I'm going to be telling you guys how to leverage every single advantage you can in Into the Pits. And there is so, so much to leverage, my friends. You can never get hit. You can deal so much damage that you just obliterate enemies when you get close enough to them. And you can just save yourself a lot of a lot of time and get to the very, very ending, clear every dungeon quick as a whip, and also flow like butter through a knife while doing it it's so so good that makes sense butter through an no knife through butter there we go <laughs> sorry <laughs> my bad so i'm hoping that some people at least dip their toe into the deep end when it comes to into the pits uh, essentially knowing what like moats are what rooms are and all those things so we're not going to cover too much of that but we will eventually talk about what priority you want to kind of do rooms in and of course weapons and spells or spells sorry not weapons uh, and also basically end game viable investment and that is a big 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 part of this game uh, but i will say one thing to note right at the cuff is that as soon as as you can unlock two runes uh, that are insanely good, you will have a significantly, significantly easier time in this game. In fact, the more you progress, the easier it kind of becomes in a weird way. Now, because we're here, might as well talk about it. Those two runes are incredibly, incredibly good, and you should upgrade them as soon as you possibly can. Also, by the by, uh, villagers are static. So when it says it costs five, it doesn't mean it costs five villagers. It means you have to have five villagers in order to upgrade it uh, and spend your resources, but it doesn't take the villagers, you know? The runes that are amazing that you're going to want to get your hands on, keep Keystone Break gives you healing. Now, at first, it starts like four healing. It's not that great, but eventually it levels up to being like 12 or six or something crazy uh, amount of HP that it's giving you. And then there's another one, which is every time you pick up a moat, you get one HP, but eventually two HP, and if I'm not mistaken, three HP if you're going to be collecting moats all the damn time. And by the way, all kinds of moats count. Uh, every kind of moat counts. Gold, uh, runes, luck, whatever. So that is incredibly OP. If you can get your hands on that you'll be good to go now just so we can finish off the whole rune talk um i would say that if well, eventually this is more of an end mid game ish thing that you're going to eventually dip into but essentially yes you're going to want a way to heal yourself repair yourself which is what those two can very much do and help you with and then you're going to want a way to stack your advantage and get abilities uh i would suggest giving yourself either mastery or strength those are just buff up any damage and make any run better the other one is to specialize in my favorite was which is bleed which we'll talk about in a minute and why it's so good uh, or you could do slow or you could do poison it's whatever you like but i do think those uh, bleed and frost are just in a league of their own and we'll explain that right now but essentially that's what you kind of want to look for a way to survive with the healing and a way to essentially get yourself more damage whilst diving deeper into the pits now because we're talking about any way that you can get a kind of synthetic advantage within the game try to get bleed uh, and make sure you equip bleed when available the reason why is because each type of elemental effect whether it be slow or frost or bleed or curse whatever is giving your magic a, a tinge or a color has a later iterative bonus that's going to be patched onto it after you've attained it so when you have bleed uh, the next couple of power stones or power runes the thing that you unlock after you beat a level uh, will eventually give you lifesteal or vampire which every time you you hit an enemy has a chance of giving you one health and if you happen to put that thing on needle or any one of the mass hitting spells you're going to be profiting like mad and regenerating a ton of health uh, becoming even harder to kill Another one that I would like to suggest to you, which I think is incredible and worth its weight in gold, is Frost, Frozen, or Slow. Uh, what this does is it imbues your power with Frost, with one tiny drop, one tiny projectile, bringing most enemies to a damned halt. And you don't need much more than one. Bleed, of course, you'll get better if you keep stacking more and more bleed on top of each other. But Frost, if you just get one Frost, you're kind of taken care of throughout the entirety of the game. Enemy are just halted in front of you and slowed like crazy and then later down the line or the upgraded frost ability which you can get increases your critical chance when an enemy is frozen which is incredibly amazing um again especially if you have a, like a burst or a many projectiles hitting all those projectiles having a higher chance to critical hits is fantastic and can make your damage 10x the other amazing point of power outside of magic and etc or, or like a damage amplification or utility based things is movement speed movement speed is amazing 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 you do not need it if you have if you develop this weird kind of understanding of the enemy's aggro which we'll explain in a minute but yes if i could get you anything that's going to give you an immediate 
leg up on the enemy or the <laughs> the, the pit. Um, it is absolutely movement speed, uh, but you only need one or two movement speed. If any more, then kind of can get you a little bit more than you bargain for. You end up like running too far away from an, from an enemy to where your spells don't actually hit them. Uh, and again, you don't need movement speed, but it's just really, really nice, especially when you haven't yet learned the hitbox or the projectile distance away from you and the dodging, spinning kind of stuff. <laughs> Anyways, bleed is huge and frost, frozen, or whatever it's called, slow is also amazing. Those are my three fr favorite elements. These are, they are fantastic. And again, when you're delving deeper, you're going to see things that give you greater critical hit uh, chance or just flat out 60% critical damage or sorry, just damage, not critical damage, just damage. Uh, or, or when you're above a certain health threshold, uh, you do a stupid amount of damage. Um, so that is something that you should absolutely try to do. So when you're diving into the pits, I would highly, highly advise this is something that you do every single run always, always do luck rooms first. The reason why is because if you don't know what luck is, luck is going to increase the drop chances of you getting higher percentages of abilities. So essentially, you, every time you unlock a room, you get a point of power. Every time you go into the point of power, you can get uh, anything from one to three uh, level up advantages on that. Um, and it can get even crazier than that. So point being is your the difference between 10% more damage or 30% more damage is pretty huge, um, especially if uh, considering your luck doesn't get burned so it's going to keep giving you that abundance of a higher chance to get the best or just crazy high uh, stat levels uh, in your points of power uh, so again always do luck rooms first just the algorithm and the weirdness win out, out a lot you'll get blood rooms again and if you're first and you're just starting out uh, then there's plenty of chances to get more blood rooms and you don't really have much to lose at that point uh, so just be sure to do that that's amazing very helpful very good now uh, on that topic Blood sacrifice rooms are worth their weight in gold if, and I mean if, you happen to already have a way to heal like bleed or vampire stacked on top of bleed um, or keystone heal fully leveled up um, or moat heal fully leveled up, then you can start playing where you literally just drain your, level, your life bar completely. Or if you start developing a, a skill for dodging, which we'll talk about again at some point. Um, but yes, th those are things that can drastically, drastically give you like a complete obliteration run, which is where you instantly see the boss and you just destroy everything immediately right in front of you. That's Those are also worth their weight in gold, but I would suggest waiting until you have your uh, runes leveled up so you have kind of a cradle so you don't just get your head kicked in, my guy. So yes. Now let's talk about the best spells. Something that you can do is just as soon as you lo jump into the pits, if you don't find any sort of good um, ability, just go and go back to the village and come back immediately uh, and try to get at least one uh, magic type that you enjoy using or else this game is going to be a little unfun. Now, you can just get good, essentially, at all of the abilities, which is totally possible, but I do think there are some that just synergize too well with the pools of power that you can kind of add to them, such as what I think is the best spells in the game going in this order, Fan, I know, <laughs> Fan. Needle, shotgun, and and nu nuble, n n n whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it's called. The reason why all of those are really good: fan, needle, and shotgun specifically. Fan is the king of burst damage, and the amount of times you're going to turn a corner, an enemy is going to be right there, or you're going to be confident enough to get right up on top of the enemy and eventually just obliter obliterate their face as soon as you put that hand <laughs> near them. It's going to happen sooner rather than later, especially if you keep uh, keep being aggressive. Uh, again, shotgun is be is good in the same way that fan is, except it has a little bit more range to actually because fan spreads out in a cone and shotgun just kind of uh, falls off with damage so if you ever get like range mods shotgun is going to become super good but i will say nothing comes close to fans damage because as long as you're close and you're sinking up all those pellets things just get obliterated instantly and both shotgun and fan have multiple projectiles so again with vampire it's every time you get a hit you heal so all of those tiny hits have a chance of healing now yes it's a small chance like 12 chance or five six percent chance to heal but again if you're hitting in like with so many projectiles so quickly you're you're constantly flipping that coin and you're gonna be able to profit essentially now let's talk about needle the reason why needle is so good is because if you ever run double fan you'll realize that you you're lacking range and specifically accuracy and one of the things you'll fight around end game is you'll fight these giant orbs or these kind of like pus balls that when you eventually if you accidentally back into them they hurt uh, and they're probably one of the only things that I feel at this point still eventually get a hit on me just because you can get really good at dodging. You can do the whole run without getting hit once. 
um, or just be able to repair the damage so it doesn't even feel like you're getting hit at all. Anyways, uh, so a needle is really good because it has insane range, and again, you fire so, so quickly. Now, it doesn't have as many projectiles as Fan, but because you're firing so quickly in like a laser dot accuracy sight, you're able to pop those balloons before you're able to accidentally f uh, run into them. Also, if you get passed through, if you go down a hallway, that just keeps going perfectly straight and wrecking shop. Um, also, yeah, double, double, if you have double of any of these, it can be a lot of fun, but it's perfect if you at least get one or two of these. So if you get Fan and needle it's pretty huge if you get fan and shotgun and hope to god you get some range on your shotgun you're gonna be pretty good uh, if you get needle uh, and fan or needle and shotgun that's the ideal combo at least for me uh, and then there's this thing called uh, new I, I always mess up saying it it's this one right now what we're using right here uh, it's basically like a fistful of a shotgun pellet blast but it has insane range and gets to basically have have its cake and eat it too and there's a spell called hawk which is like a sniper round but it doesn't really get a benefit from on hit whereas this one does because you fire are like five shots out of your hand and it has a crazy range uh, and also melts things uh, so it's just you're able, you're able to do high impact damage and also uh, be able to hit with multiple projectiles benefiting from things like slow uh, or, or needle or bleed or poison whatever it could be because you get more damage based on the projectiles uh, and such like that uh, but again at, at a certain point you're gonna be obliterating everything uh, so we're just kind of getting to the weird hyper damage minutia uh, which is not needed in any way so you can get by with just choosing what you like honestly but for me if I could give you a suggestion needles hard to sh fuck up fan is a blast when eventually you get confident enough to just dive bomb enemies and shotgun is just good just insanely good uh, it's range is not that bad and eventually when you have enough if you have like one roll of a good plus three damage or plus three bleed or plus three freeze it's gonna shred okay and now let us talk about the weird minutia of movement so uh, this is where we're getting into like actually how to never get hit, how to feel confident in your movement, how to progress immensely. First one being, uh, enemies are limited by their AI and their animations, thankfully. So what that means in one sense is that if you change your height or positioning or just run past an enemy and you constantly keep yourself in a, in a, a plane of motion or just jump to a place in which they'd have to travel down to like get to like the stairs, uh, that's a whole bunch of track that you can keep gamifying essentially. So you can get height, get go low, get high, get low, get high, get low, jump onto a different platform in which they'll have to go around because their AI has pathing. Um, there are a few enemies that can just go straight for you, which is why you should kill them first, uh, and you'll all get that kind of stuff uh, as you progress. But the other thing that I would highly suge uh, suggest is the kind of cradle mentality. So, one thing that's really hard in this game is that if an enemy hits you, they're going to be really, really hurting you. And enemies have weirdly good hearing, or it's just that you can't hear yourself really or kind of see an enemy coming for you. So you could be killing an enemy, but then the enemy a couple feet away from you behind a wall heard that is now going to start banking around and coming for you. So always create what I would call a cradle. So essentially, you're going to basically just backtrack to an area and essentially go to like, okay, so if we drew ABC, you were going to go to A, then to B, then you could either go to C or A again, um, but you'll always kind of jump back to B because you know that that's the place you have been and where there's no enemies there, uh, or at least you could react to them seeing them come in uh in that same place again this is ideal if you have an open area to where you can see if an enemy is pushing on you because again if as long as you're investing in the right things you're going to be dealing with plenty of damage so yes create a cradle for you think of abc stay to b feel free to push to c or a but just don't try to make d because then eventually you're you, you can't see where enemies are coming from and that's the whole point of a cradle uh, and yeah, that will keep you immensely safe because there's so many times where an enemy will just sneak up on you and fucking donkey punch you in the back of the head. And you're like, oh, well, shit, <laughs> this is a whole mess. <laughs> Anyways. And then the other thing is, is enemies are also animation locked. This is the other kind of part of this. Um, but you can get really good at essentially perfectly realizing the movement projectile speed to where you can like literally see projectiles move, like graze your cheek, but not hit you. It's a really cool feeling. Also, when you're fighting the bosses at endgame or when you're fighting other enemies, you can do this thing where essentially you get really close to them and then you jump. And by you doing that, you'll essentially initiate an aggro slash or a melee hit from one of them and they'll stop moving if they do that. So you can basically get really far away from them if you just know how to tease out a melee attack out of them uh, and then backpedal, uh, which you kind of do by doing like a drive, drive by. I think you just run right by them. You can also jump, which I have a tendency to do. 
Um, and, and yeah, also, another thing that's crazy in this game is that you are literally like a floating head. You do not have a body that can get hit by everything. So as long as that head is safe and you're constantly gliding around these projectiles, you will never, ever get hit. And hopefully I'm showing you some gameplay of what that kind of looks like, hopefully. Uh, I was not, I, at the beginning I did not look like this, but this is what you get by positive reinforcement and consistently putting yourself in an uncomfortable position to where the uncomfortable position becomes the, the most comfortable essentially uh so just don't hesitate go forward have fun uh again life steal keystone heal will will keep you keep you good and keep your head on on straight again i find the hardest part of this game is until you can get keystone heal up plus level it up a little bit as soon as you do that the game is just a breeze and a blast uh, and again you can start playing dangerously start feeling like you're getting a hyper advantage on this world and just crush it uh, which is why I think this game is expertly balanced is because you can leverage your advantage so much uh, that you will go from moving around every corner and being a little scared to just dominating and having a blast doing it. Alright with all those things aside there is still one foundational kind of cheesy but also hey man this is a roguelike we want to leverage every possible advantage we can. Essentially, there is a way to essentially gamify this system and take away the teeth out of this roguelike kind of game. And one of the things you can do in this game, and it is kind of a little bit glitchy, but still, um, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about it and considering this is to leverage every advantage. If you are in a room and you take a, an abundance of damage or you catch yourself at the last minute just getting devoured by a bleed, a poison, or whatever, uh, you can pause the game quit to menu and then when you load back in you will be in the floor before you went into the room going back in time essentially which yes is quite quite overpowered uh and yeah a little bit glitchy and weird but it, it's true it can get every advantage if you just wanted to have a perfect run and if you got your ass handed to you in one of the rooms you're all good just reset it essentially but i will say it is kind of balanced out because the rooms are randomly generated every single time you step into them so don't expect to go into the same shit room it could be better it could be worse it could have more drop points of luck and it could have less drop points of luck uh, either or uh, and all things like that can happen so just take that into consideration if you are running with like no no survivability you've been grinding this game it's just harder for you because whatever it could be reaction time a limited time of practice all these things yeah just do that leverage every possible advantage see the ending have fun enjoy the game anyways ladies and gentlemen hopefully this helped uh that that has been my ultimate guide to some extent for into the pits if you fall Follow those things if you use those spells if you get those runes if you kind of make a cradle and you tease out the enemy's attacks and you invest in the right things ie damage or slow or poison you will profit also slow and poison do not cannibalize each other in any way because bleed essentially is whenever your enemy moves they're gonna take damage by them being slow that doesn't mean they take less damage or at least you just do so much damage in this game that it doesn't matter that you need to throw another bullet at them to knock them dead you're gonna be a okay anyway uh, still be careful though because when you get to certain endgame things enemies hit hard enough to where they can still blitzkrieg you so just make sure you have 10 blood and you should be good uh, again the priority for the room should always be luck sacrificial altar if you're feeling confident but ladies and gentlemen we did do a whole ass playlist where we showcased all of it and we progressed and got better as we went which is quite the interesting uh, watch in my opinion but if you want to go check that out feel free to if you want to put down the game and just watch my dumb ass run around and kill shit <laughs> then there it is also we stream a great deal and that's where we found this lovely gem of a game uh, so yeah if you have any uh, suggestions for us shoot me a discord message over at our lovely discord community in the grin suggestion tabs and maybe i can even see you in one of the streams we also do uh too too frequently frankly <laughs> my body's breaking and my mind's crumbling but here we are still holding true uh but yes uh, 5 p.m mountain time we'll stream on youtube and twitch given the colors uh you can see uh anyways thank you so much for your time hope you guys do enjoy the rest of your day hopefully this helped thank you kindly for your time and listening to me ramble thank you again and goodbye my friends